Why does the weather term feels like feel wrong? To this meteorologist, Don Paul, me, uh, I've got a podcast that hopefully is rejuvenated, and it's called Don Paul's Bits of Blather on weather, climate, and occasionally some humor. And the term feels like is not new. It's been around for decades. I think it was conjured up by the folks in State College, Pennsylvania at AccuWeather. And it's a shorthand way of letting people know what it may feel like out there, whether in cold weather with the wind chill index coming into play or in hot and humid weather when humidity actually retards how much cooling you can get from your perspiration uh, evaporation into the atmosphere, which is obviously slowed when there's already a lot of water vapor in the atmosphere. The wind chill index was developed during World War II. Two researchers in Antarctica actually uh, would measure how long it took a bottle of water hanging in the wind to freeze solid. And in Antarctic winter, that would be a pretty short-lived episode. And the wind chill index provided what was called the wind chill equivalent temperature. And it was used in most industrialized nations for many decades. And then as we got toward the turn of the century, researchers both in the meteorological sciences and medical researchers did a lot of recalculating and found the original wind chill index was overdoing it. It was overestimating how much heat could be lost from your skin even in extremely harsh conditions. And so a new wind chill index began being used in North America, the U.S. and Canada, and the United Kingdom in 2001. It's been in use ever since. It is far from perfect, and it is far from totally precise, but it is a little closer to the reality of how much heat you're losing. Uh, and it's something that uh, is tied to human activity, and that's what's led to the unavoidable imprecision in a wind chill index. If you're out there shoveling snow and you're working up a sweat, you're going to feel the wind chill index much less than someone who's waiting for a bus and who's totally exposed and all that person can do is stomp their feet trying to stay warm. You still lose the equivalent amount of heat through either conduction with a cold surface, evaporation, if you've worked up a sweat shoveling, the evaporative cooling from that perspiration evaporating into the wind, and just plain radiation from your skin. And uh, the wind chill index now is still imprecise, but less imprecise than the original wind chill index. As an example, uh, the wind chill index in the blizzard of 85 was the old one. We had temperatures close to zero on Monday, January 21st that year, with winds averaging over 30 miles an hour, producing wind chills in the minus 40s and minus 50s. The new wind chill index uh, would come out to range from the minus upper 20s to minus 30s. Still awful. Still able to produce frostbite in a very short time, hypothermia just a longer time and not very long at all in that range. And then of course, it could also take you out altogether. So we tend to try to be more accurate with the wind chill index, but because of the tie into human activity, there's, a, as I said, some imprecision. You can get the wind chill index just by putting into any search engine wind chill index chart, and it's used uh, on National Weather Service home off on office websites, it'll pop right up for you. If you really want to have it handy, you can print it out. And the same basic principles apply to the heat index. Feels like doesn't cut it for someone like me. Hey, look, I got time to kvetch, and this is my chance. If you're reading The Great Gatsby under a big shade tree and having a nice mint julep, you're going to feel the heat and humidity a lot less than someone who, even in a shaded garden, is pulling weeds out of clay soil. Uh, it's human activity again. And of course, when there's more water vapor in the air, that heat becomes a lot tougher to take. And the heat index is also available on a search engine. Just type in heat index chart and it'll pop right up for you. And uh, so here I am in semi-retirement. And, you know, I fill in from time to time at WIVB News 4. And if the current temperature panel pops up, it says, feels like. I don't say feels like. I'm one stubborn old dude. I show you the feels like, but my mouth says wind chill index. And the same <laughs> occurs for heat index. And these two 
uh, terms are still very important when we get into the more extreme values, which we have not suffered this cold weather season yet. Somewhere along the line we may, but there's nothing like that in our immediate future. So I hope you enjoy this little essay, uh, audio essay. And if you do, please tell your friends. The podcast is available on Spotify and Amazon and uh, also, what's the, oh, Apple. So I'm on three spots so far. And uh, spread the word. If you don't like it, just keep your mouth shut. Don't tell anyone. I can't afford that kind of downplay. (laughs) And uh, I'll be chatting again with you in the next day or two. Thanks for listening this far.